My name is Keevan Lewis, and I'm the Museums Programs Outreach Coordinator for the National Museum of the American Indian. At the museum, I oversee the Artist Leadership Program, which targets individual artists for the Western Hemisphere. It also targets museums and cultural centers here in the United States and Canada. We've been doing a prototype here at the Institute of American Indian Arts uh, to target uh, college students for a one-week visit to the collections in Suitland, Maryland during spring break. My name is Tanya Larson. I'm Gwich'in in Swedish. I live in Yellowknife Northwest Territories, Bachelors of Fine Arts in Jewelry and Digital Arts and I'm a junior. Well, I had this idea to create 3D models of the artifacts that were found in the National Museum of the American Indian Collection. So I pretty much merged these two into learning how to scan objects and fixing them in the 3D model program and then printing them for the goal of taking these items out of the collection through 3D models and making tool workshops back home in my community. It has stepped forward in using these artifacts that are found in the collection as reference points. The trip itself was very exciting. Um, Kevin made sure that we had everything we needed. My focus, I, wanted, I started with the tools because I really wanted to get them scanned and go over them uh, each night to make sure that I got the information I needed. I looked at the beadwork, any hide work that was there. There was a lot of huge trade beads, necklaces. Some of them were like 11 foot long. There was lots of clothing that I hadn't seen in real life before. So it was really good to have that experience. Well, I started switching some of the techniques I was using to create the tools and I really focused on my blacksmithing class when I came back and I wanted to forge all of the steel. So you take different types of steel and you stack them and you forge well them and then you twist it or create a pattern within it. Well, in the foundry, I was um, standing some steel down because I was about to etch them. And then I was also forging some, um, taking a piece of metal, putting it in the forge and shaping it. It takes a lot of work to forge steel because there's lots of welding and uh, forging and then grinding and sanding down. I definitely spend many hours doing that just to achieve like a few tools. Uh, after what I've done, I need to sharpen the edge to a certain amount because it shouldn't be too sharp. And then I'm gonna etch them and then I'm gonna polish the top so that the lines, the black lines on the bottom, really contrast with the lighter lines of the different steel. Then I'm gonna attach it to a handle so that people could use it to scrape height. Well, I really enjoyed um, being in the collections. Like, it seemed there was not enough hours in the day for us to be there. I, I'm looking forward to the day that I can come back and work longer to do research. I wasn't sure what to expect when I went to NMAI, and they have the most amazing facilities um, that is really, has been created with an indigenous perspective. Um, all the collections are located on like the north, west, east, and south, and there's even like windows so that uh, the artifact can connect with the um, world outside, even though they're UV protected. And um, they even had like a smudge room where if you wanted to cleanse yourself before going in the collection, you had the opportunity to do so. I really got excited when I saw this. It was a fish spear. And if anybody knows my work, they know that I love spikes and things that can seem very dangerous. <laughs> And so um, I'm really excited this summer um, or next summer to be able to replicate one. That's actually a 3D scan. I took pictures of it. It's called photogrammetry. And uh, this software created a model so that in the future I can uh, 3D print it because I find it's easier to replicate um, artifacts by holding an object. This is a bone puncher that you use when tanning moose hides. I did photogrammetry on it so that I could have the opportunity to 3D print it. 
I actually had this terrible experience involving a bone puncher in the past. <laughs> and <laughs> what happened is I went to Tan Heights in Lutoke, a community back home, and this very amazing woman lent me her bone puncher so that I could flesh a hide. And because I was silly and inexperienced when it comes to learning my culture, I left it unattended for a few minutes and her dog got a hold of it. <laughs> and ate it. <laughs> so that is one of the most terrible experiences I've ever had. And so I really wanted to be able to have a um, model to make her a new one. <laughs> so that's why I scanned this um, object. We didn't have lots of photographs compared to other tribes. Um, we have just a few drawings showing how our people looked before being westernized. And I saw this Gwich'in knife through the paperwork I got before going there. I was really excited because I'm taking blacksmithing here with uh, Patrick Morrissey. And as you can see on the side of uh, this hunter, he has a knife too. So throughout the experience, I was able to see real objects that came from drawings. And for me, that was exciting because I didn't know how accurate these drawings was were, but um, as I browse through the collections, a lot of the objects that are found in the drawings are actually in the collection. And this is the process I went through uh, to replicate this knife, actually. That was before I left to NMAI. So it was all forged in the facilities in the sculpture building. And uh, it was my first time forging a tool. Uh, it was really exciting to be able to do that with the pictures in high resolution that uh, I had from the Smithsonian. This is one of the height scrapers that was in the collection. And I decided to make a pattern welded steel. And it's actually having different types of uh, metal. And uh, I did a twist to it and I forged it. And this is um, the end product. And um, it's going to be used to uh, scrape heights, to thin it out. And I just want it to be very pretty. Um, because I like to take pride in my tools now that I learned my lesson for life. <laughs>